Hi, my name is Roman Khan. I'm going to teach you how to use Minitab by taking you through a worked example from my book, Minitab Exercises for Green Belts. By the way, that's available on Amazon. I recommend you work along with the example by downloading the data set from my website, RMK6 Sigma. And by the way, that's free. All the details are given below. Let's go when you're ready. This is going to be a series of three videos on regression. This is the first video and it's going to cover simple regression. The next two videos will cover multiple regression. So if you want to work along with the video, you can download the data sets from rmk6sigma.com. If you want to do the full green belt course on Minitab, you can go to my new website, thinksixsigma.com. So this is exercise 9.01. The Weblin effect postulates that the demand for a luxury good can be increased by making it more expensive and thus perceived to be more exclusive. The head chef at Monge 2 thought about using the effect on the restaurant's signature dish. Over a few weeks, he started to increase the price and measured how many of the dishes were sold every two days. Now, the data is recorded in worksheet Weblin in time order. You've been hired as a consultant to analyse the data and report the results to the head chef. The predictor column is price. That's the price of the signature dish. The response column is sold. That's the number of dishes sold. Ensure the following points are covered in the report to the head chef. Number one, is there a significant relationship between the predictor and the response? Number two, what type of relationship is there between the predictor and the response? Number three, what is the strength of the relationship in terms of R squared? For linear relationships, report the correlation coefficient. Number four, can the study be validated through the residuals? Are there any issues? Number five, at a price of 83.1, is the restaurant likely to sell 43 signature dishes in two days? Now, it would be remiss of me not to tell you about this, but you can do the complete regression module at thinksixsigma.com for free right now. So that's a one hour long training video training you on the background to simple regression, multiple regression and multiple regression with optimization. So as I said, that's there for a limited time only. So I put the data from worksheet Weblin into Minitab. There's two columns of data. One is called price and the other is called sold. So price is the price of the signature dish and sold is the number of signature dishes sold every two days. In our scenario, price is the predictor and the response is the number of dishes sold at that price in two days. We need to prepare a report for the head chef. And within that report, the first thing that we need to make clear is is there a significant relationship between the predictor and the response? To do that, we need to go into the assistant, go into the regression module and run the simple regression. So we'll click on that. The Y column is traditionally the response and for us the Y column is sold. And then the predictor column is price. We've been told that the data is recorded in time order, so we can click the tick box there. Then we can choose the regression model between linear and quadratic, or we can ask that Minitab chooses for us. Let's go with Minitab choosing for us. So then we just need to click OK. To answer the question of is there a relationship between the predictor and the response, on the top left of the summary report, we get the answer yes. So there is a relationship between X and Y. Next, we have to answer the question, what type of relationship is there between the predictor and the response? So if we go to the fitted line plot on the top right of the summary report, we see a straight red line, so it's a linear relationship. And the other thing that confirms it's a linear relationship is the regression equation there. And also we see a correlation coefficient bar. That also tells us it's a linear relationship because we wouldn't get that if it was a quadratic. Then we're on to number three. What is the strength of the relationship in terms of R squared? For linear relationships, report the correlation coefficient. So again, we go to the summary report. We see the R squared value at 37.47. So not a particularly strong relationship, but there is a relationship there. That means that 37.47% of the changes in the response can be explained by changes in the predictor. So the strength of the linear relationship is deemed to be 0.61. That's the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient is also called R. That's where you get your R squared from. Then we're on to number four. Can the study be validated through the residuals? Are there any issues? For that, we can have a look at the model selection report. 
That reports on data points with large residuals and unusual residuals. Unusual residuals can have effect on the regression line because usually they're at either end and they can pull the line in a particular direction. So we've got one unusual residual above the line and one below. So hopefully they're pulling each way and they're going to cancel each other out. And the large residuals don't look too far from the normal body of the data. So I don't think they're having an effect. But for the unusual residuals, what we can do is note down which rows they're in. So that one's in row 102. And that one's in row 100. So what we can do is duplicate the worksheet. And then we can take out rows 102 and 100. Let's start off with 102 because you've got to do it with the highest row number first and then delete the row and then do 100. Then run the simple regression again. And then what we can do is see how much the regression equation has changed. So now the regression equation is saying 0.385 plus 0.43x. On the first one, we've got an intercept of 4.7 the gradient of the straight line is 0.42. So the gradient of the straight line is 0.43 in one of them and 0.42 on the other. So those unusual data points are hardly having any effect at all. Then we can go to the diagnostic report just to have a quick look on there, see if we can see any patterns in the residuals. We see the large residuals. Like I said, I'm not too concerned about them. And because the data was in time order, we can look for time order effects in the residuals versus observation order. And we see the large residuals to start off with. Maybe that's just like a bedding in phase for when the dishes were selling. But we don't see any other time ordered issues. So the residuals can validate the study. Number five. At a price of 83.1, is the restaurant likely to sell 43 signature dishes in two days? Let's have a look at the prediction report for that. And what we can do is we can draw reference lines on the prediction report and see if those lines lie within the prediction interval. Double click to open up the editor, right click on the graph, and then go to add reference lines. Okay, so we want a y value of 43 and an x value of 83.1. Click OK, click OK again to enlarge it. So the intersection point is a price of 83.1 and 43 dishes sold in two days. And we can see that's outside of the prediction interval. So the restaurant is unlikely to sell that many dishes at a price of 83.1. So we've given everything that's required in the report. So that concludes this example. If you want to learn more about Minitab, you can subscribe to one of my many courses on my new website, thinksixsigma.com. You can also pick up a free 365 page Six Sigma Greenbelt guide from my website, thinksixsigma.com. Let's continue to learn together. See you soon.